We've already had a look at a couple of the 10 watt version of these rechargeable floodlights. I thought it was time to take a look at the slightly bigger version, the 20 watt one. So this arrived today and uh, it's got the same sort of a 8.4 volt charging port in the bottom and it's got the battery box in the back. But this one is notable that it's got two intensity settings. It's got the low and high position in the switch. And it makes a, I would say at its lowest setting, it's very similar to the 10 watt and it's a lot brighter in the 20 watt setting. So uh, let's get this base off for a start because uh, it's quite bulky. So I'm secretly hoping that this, this is stuffed with batteries uh, to accommodate the higher power. It came with the very similar setup to the other one, the little uh, charger and the car charger. Uh, which uh, I've, I've completely lost. Where have I put them? Oh, that's good. That's a good start that I've misplaced the chargers. There it is. It feels, uh, this is a bad start, it feels a much smaller, cheaper, lighter charger and it's only rated half the current. But it is the 8.4 volt. Well, I've not actually checked that yet. So, um, other notable features are that the um, one of the screws that holds the back on is clearly uh, cross-threaded, which is not very nice. Not very keen in that at all. Well, you know what they say in China. We don't always cross thread screws, but when we do, we make sure we run them right into the hilt. So this should be interesting. I do notice that uh, they don't just list 10 watt, 20 watt, 30 watt and 50 watt. They also list the different colour temperatures, and also green, blue and red. Um, they also list the lithium battery and the input voltage. Well, I don't know why they'd list different lithium batteries. Oh, actually, the lithium battery, it says 4.4 amp hour, 8.4 amp hour, and uh, they've got a higher voltage one at 6.6 .6 amp hour. And the input voltage is 8.4 volts, so it's the sort of like the two sets of cells. Uh, and it says working time four hours, which I'm guessing is probably going to be at the lowest setting because that's how they usually cheat these things. I doubt it's at full power. Much bigger case, which you kind of expect. Here comes the cross-threaded screw. That is just so annoying that it's cross-threaded like that. Yeah, it's all chewed up where they've cross-threaded it. This is very, very light. I can already feel it's very light. Oh, seriously? It's two cells. It's like pretty much what the little 10 watt one had. Oh, that's a bit cheap and nasty, especially when it's such a big case. Uh, so it's got the common negative lead and it's got the two red leads that uh, are being switched between. And it's at a slight modification done. They've got like, almost like two leads soldered on, they've cut one off. I'm not really sure what that's about. Right, okay. The first disappointment is this. Presumably it's got protection on board. I think I can feel a little protection circuit board. I uh, always had a, a trouble getting these out. It's a, a silicone type goo at the back and it just seems to really grip them so tightly they don't come off. You have to actually cut them off. But I think that's pretty much just two 18650s in series with the little protection and uh, balancing circuit. Let's uh, take the front off this. Is it going to be resistors perhaps? In both the other ones it was resistors with one masquerading as uh, something more sophisticated. It was uh, the one that was all potted so you couldn't tell it was just resistors. I kind of prefer the resistors myself because um, it means that as the battery voltage goes down, it does get a wee bit dimmer, but it results in a good long run time, and it's very, very simple. Theoretically, the protection circuit in the battery should cut it off when the uh, voltage drops too low as well, if it has protection circuitry. I can see the two rows of 10 chips, but I, they're long ways, as if they're probably just two sets wired in parallel, which would kind of make sense. Uh, given the, how the other circuitry was arranged in the other ones. Uh, was that seal? No, that seal has been pinched. Uh, it wasn't fully in position. It's been closed on. Uh, there. That's, so that's uh, more points lost. Mm. 
I'm not impressed so far. It works, it's, it's plenty bright. And it's very usable even at the lower setting. What's this going to reveal? Is it going to reveal active electronics or is it going to reveal resistors? Oh, blimey, look, they're just not even... Okay, so um, there's the uh, low setting, which is one 3.3 ohm resistor, and the high setting is 1.1, because it's two 2.2 ohm resistors in parallel. Yeah, pretty much what you'd expect, isn't it? And that will be just, uh, well, let's uh, do the test then. Let's see, let's see what current, let's uh, put the power supply on here. And I'll set the power supply to 8.4 volts, which should be fresh batteries. And then we can emulate uh, how much current and what sort of power we're actually getting. So that's uh, 8.4 volts. And if I then clip the... I assume this is a... Let's get the polarity right. I, mean, I think that's right. Let's make a wild guess. Um, yeah. So I'll put that on there. Right here. So this is the low setting, and uh, that's swamping out. It's drawing 700 milliamps. So the low setting is, let's say I'm going to get a calculator. Eight point four times, and it's the point seven. So that's about just under six watts. So five watts at a full charge. So what's it going to be in the higher setting? Higher setting, it's drawing one point five amps on the button. So this time it's eight point four times one point five equals about 12 watts, so nowhere even remotely near the 20 watt they're seeing. That could, it might as well just have been a 10 watt, uh, 10 watt light really, especially as it's going to get dimmer as it goes down, so um, as the battery goes down. What sort of voltage is it across uh, the LED at that? Let's get the meter in. That was the, that was actually the voltage I was measuring there, was the voltage from the battery, so it, it's going to actually be uh, that's set right, so that's good. So um, it's going to be the voltage across it is about yeah three volts per LED. So in that case, doing it on that, uh, that was about six point was it six point two roughly? Oh, this is bright, bright to look at, even though it's not. Let's say six point two. Let's be generous. Six point two, uh, six point two volts times 1.5 amps equals, it's just under 10 watts for a 20 watt light. Oh well, I suppose they're just working the basis that, you know, by calling it a, a 20 watt, by putting a 20 watt LED in it, they, they claim it's a 20 watt fitting, but it's actually, its power rating is actually 10 watts at best at the highest setting. Okay, righty ho, let's uh, take a look at this unusually light charger. Let's check the voltage from this charger in fact. Yes, I'm not over impressed, although to be honest, it's a nice chunky light and it does put out a lot of light. It puts out a wider beam pattern than the smaller ones. So uh, let's plug in this charger. I think they've been just, you know, they've, they've econ over economized the batteries. There was, I think they could have put a, at least a four pack in there. I think that's really quite ungenerous of them. Let's get the meter back over and we'll measure the output of this power supply. So this is usually uh, an 8.4 volt if it's like the other ones. 8 volts. 8.09. That's, um, that's not even going to charge the batteries up to their full capacity. With lithium batteries, uh, the, the, if you charge them up to say 8.4 volts, the, or that's 4.2 volts per cell, that's giving it its full capacity, but if, if you stop charging it say, in this case, 4 volts per cell, that's probably only going to be about 80% capacity. I'm not 100% sure the exact quantity, but the voltage uh, at the end of charge, the higher it gets to the, the uh, 
the closer it gets to the end of charge state to their full capacity, the smaller the change in voltage. It's uh, um, that's um, yeah. This charger is just not. I think let's open the charger and take a look inside it. Let's put this stuff out of the way. Uh, I'll probably put a link to this light uh, in the description down below, just so you know which one to avoid. Let's uh, open the charger up. I get the feeling though they're probably all going to be like this. Oop. Makes me wonder what the 50 watt one's going to be like, because the price goes up exponentially with the actual uh, the power ratings. Okay, first thing I'm noticing here is that it's a repurposed USB type power supply. Modest separation. Opto isolated feedback. Unknown transformer. Transformer sitting at a jointy angle. Typical uh, flyback circuit. Not seeing a uh, one of the little voltage reference chips. I'm seeing possibly a Zener diode. Okay, I'm I'm just going to uh, do a little bit of reverse engineering on this. I'll be back shortly. One reverse engineering later, I did the usual. I took a photo of the back of the circuit board with the phone and then just uh, adjusted it slightly and then drew the components on. Really not many components. And here's the circuitry. So let's explore it. Uh, here's the secondary of the transformer. I've not drawn the primary circuitry, the main circuitry, because the output side is the most interesting here. And it starts off very simply. It's just, you know, the Let's uh, just mask that bit off, in fact, with uh, that. Starts off with the output winding going through a single diode and to the smoothing capacitor. Now, I have to say, the diode they've used is one of those little 1N4148 size diodes. It's tiny. For for the rated output uh, of, it claims, 600 milliamps, that diode's really, really small. Uh, that's just they've maybe over-cheapified there. Um, so it goes through that small diode uh, to a 330 microfarad capacitor for the smoothing. Uh, then if we take a look directly, here's the connection going out to the two lithium cells in series, and they've got a 2.7 ohm resistor in series with them to limit the current, and that's also used as part of the uh, sensing circuit, but not 100%. Uh, it, it's used to, what's the best way to put this? The circuitry divides into two ways. The actual feedback circuit is a diode, which I plug this in and I measure the voltage across it, uh, open circuit. And I've got 7 volts across this Zener diode, uh, and then just 1 volt across this LED, with the LED in the opto-isolator, which is probably an infrared LED. And that uh, I gave the 8 volts that this thing was capping off, it wasn't putting out anymore. I wonder if they were expecting the voltage in the opto-isolator LED to be closer to 1.5. Um, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, and it's got a 100 ohm resistor uh, across it, just to uh, give a slight load for this uh, Zener, just to make it more stable. Um, the indicator, the little green and red, it lights uh, red when it's charging and goes green when it's fully charged. That's so cheap and nasty what they've done here. Here's the single diffuse package with the three leads and the two LEDs and the common negative. The green is just lit continually from a 5.1 thousand ohm resistor, 5,100 ohms, 5K1. Which means the green LED is lit very, very dimly all the time. It never goes out. Even when it's charging, it doesn't go out. And then the red resistor is lit via this 1K resistor, but there's also a sort of potential divider. The red, the 1K resistor feeds the red LED plus this 220 ohm resistor, which uh, is the voltage at the end of that 220 ohm resistor will vary between um, the if the cell was low, it would pull it closer to the positive rail um, and as the cell charges up and the vol voltage will effectively drop in that uh, close to the sort of negative rail uh, because it's being fed from the negative rail here via this resistor. And what that means is that the 
because the red LED has a forward voltage of, say, about 2 volts or so, uh, they've chosen those component values just to form a potential divider so that the as the voltage in the battery rises, the red LED will get dimmer. And that's it. It's not precise. It's not got some voltage threshold detection. It's just... As it charges up, the red LED gradually gets dimmer, meaning it goes orange because the green is continually lit until the red LED goes out completely, uh, in which case it's probably still charging because that's not an accurate indication. But then because the green's lit all the time, you can then see the green because the red's gone out and that's it's just the cheapest, nastiest thing they could have actually done. But having said that, I suppose ultimately it works, but... It means that when the red LED has gone out and it's gone green, it doesn't necessarily mean it's actually reached full charge yet, and it's never going to reach full charge in this one. Fortunately, I've got the other chargers, which do seem to be uh, polarity compatible, so um, I can charge it off the other ones. But, um, yeah, for a much more expensive light, it's much lower quality. Uh, the light itself is just really the same sort of arrangement, but uh, just... Um, yeah, I'm not overly impressed with that one, I'm afraid. But uh, worth buying it and taking it to bits anyway to find out.